right now. It is time for our good friends up north, not that far north, actually, in uh, South County, Massachusetts, and that is uh, the Berkshire Edge. Uh, of course, you can find them at theberkshireedge.com. Once again, the Berkshire Edge. Dot com, but also live here uh, on Robin Hood Radio on a Wednesday morning. Good morning, guys. Good morning. We're uh, we're get we're a little uh, getting a little late start this morning. So <laughs> we're more scrambling around to get ourselves some coffee. <laughs> well, we, what's funny about that is I did a lot of work for setup for th- for this morning, uh, yeah. thinking that I could just come in and, uh, but once again. Uh, one little thing happens, and all of a sudden the chain breaks. <laughs> uh, exactly, right. <laughs> it, and it just ruins everything else, all your plans. Well, uh, there is anyway. lots There is lots to talk about uh, here uh, on the Berkshire Edge uh, and in the Berkshire Edge. We always just touch a fraction, a fraction of the stories that are compiled on a daily basis it's at the Berkshire We put up, you know, five or six stories a day. Yeah. So, uh, so, so what, what we talk about just gives you little highlights, but um, there's much, much more, and it's updated like Marcy was saying every day. So this just gives you a little insight into what's going on in South County. We'll start off uh, with, uh, once again, the economic downturn and a project of the, of the redevelopment of the Eagle Mill um, but uh, that is now in jeopardy. Yes, David, do you want to start with this? David here. Wait a second. David. Sorry. <laughs> David, are you here? He's coming, I think. David? Hello? There yeah. he is. There. Um, he was just asking about the Eagle Mills. Oh, uh, you mean our, our, our lead item? Yes. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, apparently, uh, you know, that was a very big project um, that was, uh, uh, that's been scaled back to, to the, uh, it's, it's the old com- a complex in, in uh, old mills in, in Lee. And uh, Jeff Cohen, uh, a developer, had these big plans for uh, a really huge Redevelopment project, and he's had to have scaled them back um, quite a bit uh, due to the due to the COVID uh, p- epidemic. Uh, it's really it's it, it isn't it isn't a project that's uh, going to uh, that's dead, but it's it's uh, well, it's, it's going to be. But it's in jeopardy. It's in jeopardy. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not dead yet, but it is in jeopardy. I think most projects that uh, are, are in jeopardy, but I, I, maybe not the term, in turmoil. I think that is a better word. Yeah. Turmoil? Yeah, in turmoil. <laughs> so, well, simply because um, they're, they're obviously going to have to adjust these projects uh, if, if they're going to be successfully done, uh, like everybody else have had, has had to adjust uh, during this pandemic. So I don't like I, – yeah, I think that jeopardy puts – a not too much of a negative impact, even though I'll tell you what, and we'll talk about this later. Berkshire County has just taken unbelievable hits in the past. Oh, in the oh past. yeah. Well, and we'll talk about those later. But well, it, you know, we we can talk about it a little bit now, and you know, because it, while this, this is a project that uh, is is been scaled back, still, um, you know, it's it's uh, it's at least it's it's. Moving forward, whereas uh, you know the, the cultural, you know the Berkshires depend upon a kind of massive cultural uh, season and uh, in the summer, and uh, much of it's been canceled. Hey, well, that's um, why I, I want to go to the. We'll, we'll hop very quickly to because we can talk about the general. I mean, Berkshire County has just lost uh, almost all of its all entertainment. Of its yeah, all yeah. of its revenue, and then. Uh, you take you take Kripalu. That is the people that work there. They're they're laying off 450 yeah. workers. I yeah. mean, it's 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 astounding uh, uh, yep. what is actually happening. And also, uh, I forget the name of the restaurant uh, north of Kripalu. That's up in closer to Pittsfield. Uh, 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 they are they are closing to the public um, as well. Mese? I, Mese? No. I forget. Of, I forget which one. North of. Um, Oh, um, in West Stockbridge? 
I don't know. It's like oh, a big yeah. castle. Well, there are a lot of them. Right. It's like a big castle where you can go eat dinner and stuff like that. Um, uh, an old house, and, and it slipped my mind. But anyways, I just look at Berkshire County, and I say, this is one of the hardest-hit counties, I think, in the country. Yeah, I know. I mean, it really is. Well, I mean, look at look at what is uh, the cultural institutions that have canceled. Tanglewood, Jacob's Pillow, Shakespeare and Company, Williamstown Theater Festival. I mean, that's, uh, you know, aside from Kripalo, which the yoga retreat, which just laid and off for yeah, well, that's what <laughs> so I just said. Had 450 people out of work. And, so. uh, you know, so about $40 million contributed to the local to, to the local economy there. Yeah, right. From Kripalu alone. And then, um, yeah. and, yeah. and then you know, and, and when you think of the ripple effect of, you know, those people, where do they eat? Where they come to, people come to Tangoa, they eat dinner, they stay in hotels, they shop, it brings tourists here, you know. I mean, a lot of the economy here is, is kind of hopes to make enough money in the summer to survive the winter, uh, and that's not going to happen this year. I'm talking about, yeah. Bl- okay, I finally met Blantyre. Blantyre. Oh, Blantyre. Blantyre. Right. right. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, I just hear all this and I say, my goodness gracious, what what a rough time. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we're all having a rough time, but boy, in the summertime, what a horrible, horrible situation for all the businesses and people uh, that, that appreciate everything that the Berkshires has to offer. It's just unbelievable. Well, think of it this way, though. At least you'll be able to find a parking space. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. All right. Maybe if, if you want to go anywhere, that's the problem. I want to, I want to go to a, another story, and that is yeah. your story on the 2005 tornado because uh, oh, I, yeah. I got to, while that tornado hit, my son was actually in the shopping center. And he in called Great me he, he, in Great Barrington on that day, oh, my. and he called me and said, hey, "Dad, there's a there's a tornado here. Put a hole in the side of the wall." And uh, and I said, "In Great Barrington, yeah." So I went on with the news story. He was okay. It took him about two hours to get out of town, mm. but uh, you've got a, a story where you recall that uh, 2005 tornado. Yes, we do. Uh, it was it was a tour of the. I don't think what, it was it 2005. It was, it was 1995. It was 19, well, sorry. it's 25, I'm sorry, it's 25 years. Yeah, it's, it yeah, it's, it's 1995, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's 1995, it's 25 years since it, uh, since the, uh, since that tornado right. tore through, it came right down the Route 23, which comes from Hillsdale, New York, and it came right through this little valley, and it tore right over the uh, fairgrounds, to, and uh, and tore it down, and then proceeded into uh, Monterey, where it did a lot of damage. It went up the hill, up it the went mountain, up the mountain, right, and over the mountain. And in fact, you could see this path. You could look at the mountain and see its path because it uh, all the trees were, uh, you know, down. Were down. Yeah. Um, it looked like a giant, you know, foresting, <laughs> deforesting uh, uh, path, and. Uh, uh, so the fairgrounds is, in fact, that was the end of horse racing in Great Barrington. Um, but uh, yeah, it was quite it was it was quite something. Uh, and, um, and people uh, talked the, about it for years. Yeah, there, people still talk about it. Yeah, there, there were can, a couple of know. deaths when they, when uh, with one of the student and a teacher at the school out there uh, were in a car um, that were caught in that. It was just a, an amazing an amazing thing, almost like the tornado that hit Cornwall. Uh, years before that, uh, the devastation was pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we were watching a program on public television the other day about tornadoes, and, you know, I mean, they are, there's almost no warning the way they form. You can't be prepared for them, and they are devastating. Yeah, yeah, and and this was one. Uh, yeah, it, it's, but, it all depends where they hit because when they hit in an area that's that's got a lot of stuff in it, right? Uh, there's very little you can do about it. Well, it, listen, I remember I grew up in Ohio, in what was called Tornado Alley, and uh, I remember my, uh, you know, whenever the these storms would come by, my sister, my little sister, and I would sit out on the back porch. And uh, a screen porch, and hope to see one. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, you know, the reason the reason in the distance. the reason yeah. this story resonates with me is I was caught in that Cornwall tornado in a car with a truck in front of me. Trees came down in front and in back of us, uh, and the only oh, thing that saved our saved us after it was all over, the town crew was uh, oiling and sanding the road. So they had oh. they had thank God they had chainsaws in the back of their trucks. Oh, and they right. got, but it was just I so I I just I just remember that uh, that 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 tornado in Great Barrington. Right. Now you've right. got uh, Bernie Drew. He's written a two-part account of yeah. uh, I like this the notorious members of the Berkshire 49th Regiment in oh, the Civil yeah, War. Oh, yeah. Bernie Bernie Drew is our local <laughs> historian. And uh, he was uh, he's been writing a series of historical pieces for us on on the members of a, a 49th Regiment in the uh, Revolutionary War, um, and the uh, it's it's quite it's quite astonishing. And one of them, uh, the characters that he he uh, that he picks out to to highlight are just amazing. <laughs> and uh, the uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's quite a, a, a little it's quite he, he's quite a you know he has. Uh, I know Bernie. I've known Bernie for years, and he has a fabulous uh, collection of of clips and historical accounts that he can he can draw on for his his, uh, his for his articles. So they're just uh, they're just fabulous. Um, and this this is a, a, a sort of an amazing story. Well, what I... well it's, it's the story of you know the 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 first part was was a description of the. The, you know the horrors of uh, being war. in the Civil War, yeah. um, but then the second. I'm part, sorry. Yeah, it's a Civil War, right? Yeah, um, and uh, the you know the regiment from Great Barrington that uh, was part of the uh, Great Barrington's 49th Regiment Volunteers, and uh, you know those, that been, those, that was a horrible war, hand to hand combat, and uh, people killing each other up close. And uh, then the second part is, you know, what became of the stragglers that finally made their way home. And uh, um, and he tells a very amusing story, really, of some of them who decided to rob a bank, um, which did not go well. Of <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you know, but that's the great um, thing about what Bernie no, writes. It's a he... very funny story, and people should uh, um, should. They should read it. We don't want to reveal it. But, uh, no, but what, what Bernie does is give you the story behind the story. There's lots of yes. interesting plot lines that run through. Like, you know, when you think of the Civil War, you don't think, and you think of cannonballs, it, you don't think of, uh, like, like cannon. when you shoot cannons here today, what kills you is the explosion. But in the Civil War, what they did is they shot the cannonballs and they rolled through where the other military people were. And when they rolled through at high speed, it would take legs off, arms off. Kill. I oh. mean, the Civil War was frighteningly brutal. Oh. Frighteningly, frighteningly yeah. brutal. And, you know, if you were wounded, you were just as well as dead because they had no way of treating you. There were no, you know, there was no uh, anesthesia. There were, there were no antibiotics. And so you were sure to get, uh, you know, I mean, to get infection and die. Yeah, it, it was it, when, when somebody chronicles a civil war uh, for a lot of people they they should look back because it was just a it, people on the they, they sat out and picnicked and watched one of the big battles thinking yeah, that the civil war one. was going to yeah. be over very very soon right uh, and uh, how wrong they were yeah mm. all right so um, now I, let, can we just go back because we got off to a slow start i just want to clarify about the eagle mills <laughs> You know what? What the what is being cut back at Eagle Mills was the plan for a really wonderful food hall. Yep. Um, he was Jeff was planning to have you know lots of restaurants and interesting kinds of food in a great big food hall, and that's really what his problem is now because restaurants are you know being devastated by this pandemic and uh, um, and. And uh, so he's cutting back on the food hall, which was going to take up a big space. Um, and now the question is, what do you do with that big space? The other parts of the of the Eagle Mill will go on, you know, the homes and manufacturing space and other things. But but it's the you know the big attraction of the food hall that's that's threatened. 
So we'll stay tuned for that. And we'll see how, how that develops. Right. And, and we, we right. talked about Cropalo right. and uh, the, that retreat. 450 workers, are they all from the, 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 the South County area? Because that's a um, huge, that would be a huge. I think know. they're, lo- yeah. well, they're largely local people. Yeah. yeah. Because that's good, you know, and unemployment figures, that's a huge unemployment hit. Oh, huge. That is, that, yeah. That is huge. And I don't know yeah. whether we said before, you know, that uh, Steve Shepard, the economist at Williams College, estimated that, that <clears throat> Kripalu is responsible for about a $40 million injection of money into the Berkshire's economy which, of course, recycles throughout the economy. So, I mean, it's really it's just one among many, but it's a disaster. Another blow. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, how, let's go to Chapter 47 here of the account of living in the forests of Lennox. <laughs> oh, this is really wonderful, and this should be seen for the photos alone. Yes, this is uh, Carolyn Newberger, uh, who's uh, uh, she and her husband, Eli, live in, in the forest. Of Lennox, uh, just uh, uh, off Route Seven, uh, down uh, right underneath the mountains, and um, she's been chronicling the the, uh, the her the life of the forest that's been around her. And today, her chapter forty seven is about bears that have come to sample the seeds at the bird feeders that they have hanging on their uh, on their porch. Uh, and she has some most amazing photos of these, yeah, these bears. These bears, I mean, a mother and baby came right. right up onto their deck. Now, they thought their bird feeders were safe because they're hung on pulleys on uh, on wires that, you know, where they lift them way up above the bird feeder, uh, way up above the deck, and they figured that the bears would not be able to get anywhere near them. Well, this bear figured out how to climb up yep. on the railing and and pull on the on the uh, wire. Uh, the wire and bring down the bird <laughs> right. feeder, bring it closer <laughs> and you know, and she's got the whole thing chronicled in you know in photographs and the most amazing of these bears balancing on the railing. Right. And, and, and these and and grabbing, kind of like a circus. Even, yeah, right. even when even when they're small bears. Yeah, even when they're small bears, they're 300 pounds. And it's amazing how yeah. they can actually be so agile. If you go to my Facebook page, you'll see it. I live in Bear Central. I've got bear cams set up around my house and we've got uh, bear cams, really. Bear cams, absolutely. I get the and the video I get uh, there's a there's this 300 pound bear, but then there's like a bear that's got to be 6 700 pounds. That always comes close by my house when he's scouting the neighborhood for garbage. And it's amazing because I leave the microphones on in these things to hear them oh, and really? see them. Oh, yeah. They're, it's, they're, it's absolutely amazing uh, to, to hear them and see them. Uh, <laughs> well, we had one in our backyard. And yeah, we, we didn't did. see it. It was at night. Um, but David had left his bird feeders up. And, uh, you know, I heard this noise out there. And uh, but it was night, and we really couldn't see it well. But we, you know, but we had a flashlight. So we, yeah. So and there he was, you know, um, <laughs> uh, sitting on the ground, yeah. tipping the uh, bird feeder, the tube, yeah. into his mouth. Yeah. It, it was like, you know, he was enjoying a uh, yeah, a, a, a beer <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to go on to uh, your theater critic uh, lamenting uh, what's going on uh, with the uh, with, uh, oh with yeah, stages. This is, uh, I mean, Peter Bergman has, uh, you know, he's uh, well. Our our season is is. Um, Kaput. Yes, <laughs> as they say. Yes. And he talks about uh, what might have been. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really sad that we're, um, for the virtues, but and I wonder how some of these uh, theater, how these organizations are going to actually survive since they, you know, they're, they're kind of hand-to-mouth anyways. But it's... Um, well, it's, yeah, they're going to they're going to hopefully uh, people will donate uh, to them what they would have spent in tickets. Yeah, right. Well, and, I mean, that's that. Right. Those yeah. are the things that you that, that that they need to get across. It's the same for us, and basically, it's the same thing for you. I mean, we need the people that that we had before who are underwriting here and advertising with you right, to, right. to pick I up mean, and do the same. It's a, the well, same we are again. Struggling. Yeah. Right. 
I want, I want to go to the last story because this story broke when we were doing a, 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 our show with uh, the Re- Republican American, Ruth Epstein, broke that uh, the, uh, the finally, after five years, the decision came down that, that that was in favor of the Salisbury Planning and Zoning Commission, which gives the Salisbury Planning and Zoning Commission uh, the right to check on everything that Lime Rock does, including racing. Uh, and it's funny because I put this story up on our on, on our website. And we yeah. probably had about 75 comments on it. Nothing, no no virulent comments, about 75. And out of those 75 comments, I will tell you, uh, 72 uh, were upset because what it means for Lime Rock Park is that in the future, all the big national races are going to Sundays. And Lime Rock Park is going to lose their three big races over the course of the next three to five years. And during those three big races, they bring about 50,000 people into our area. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's a big economic if, – if, if it develops that the, that racing keeps going that way, it will be a big economic blow to our area. Yeah. Um, but some people, of course, were obviously happy about it <laughs> as well. Yeah. Well, that's why I put this on. You know, I was typing up the uh, – uh, I was typing up the, our menu for today, and all of a sudden this news flash came on, <laughs> came over, and I thought, "Oh, I've got to include this um, because it was, it, you know, it's it's a it's a it, it's a major decision for for Northwest Connecticut." You know, it is. We spoke to Skip Barber, and he said that that they're going to operate the R right now as as they are. The thing that they're yeah. losing is the the ability to do Sunday racing. And, right. and all the worries about Sunday racing are right now preemptive worries. We don't know when they'll happen, how long it'll take it to happen for them to lose uh, those three big events that really bring so in a lot of people. why would they lose those three? Have they been having Sunday racing? No, but these races right now are going on Saturday. Uh, Saturday, but they've, yeah. already, they've already lost two two races, but there's three big events where the races uh, right now are on Saturdays. But right. these big racing organizations want to move them to Sunday, so oh, we'll, right. we'll we'll see how hard they push uh, on that. Uh, if if that happens, that's disastrous for the economy in our region. Uh, if it doesn't happen, uh, everything can go along all right. So there's a lot of unanswered questions uh, in this Lime Rock battle. Uh, between. And even in in the middle of this pandemic, at the same time, yeah, yeah, it's you know you look at it. Lime Rock has already lost uh, the first uh, half to three quarters uh, of what they were going to put on. Right now, they're right. Anyways, they, right. you know they they they're hopefully going to get two or three uh, events in, uh, and we'll see what happens. But uh, once again, like like you said, it's almost like the Berkshires. You get a pandemic yeah. this summer where all the businesses who need to make hay during the summer have have had all this problem and now you include lime rock in it as well so what's going on in south county also is going on here in litchfield county well, yeah, yeah well right. and i wonder you know where, where people are saying well we'll have an abbreviated season <laughs> but that that's i wonder if that's if it's even worth it to do that it's well I, in you know? some places it can be like the sharon playhouse it's it's a small sh- yeah, playhouse they can, uh, they can do yeah. some things out in their parking lot and ha- and have some fun with yeah. it and maybe if everything if the cdc approves everything put a couple shows on in august uh, and september but not you have to be small and nimble to do that uh and sharon yeah. playhouse is unique where they can do that so. Yeah, and and Barrington Stage is doing that yeah. here, and uh, the Berkshire Theater Festival is also thinking of doing stuff in August. And Shakespeare and Company can, you know, they already do things outside, so uh, so maybe but they there's... they're not planning anything. Yeah, I know they're not planning right. anything. All right, but well... you know this the Lime Rock question. I I'm I actually. I'm surprised uh, at the support for Lime Rock that you're describing because we kept hearing that you know the town of Salisbury was very much opposed to you know, <laughs> that it, it, it would be so noisy that the churches can't operate, and of course Music Mountain was very much opposed. Well, now, if you if you actually sent somebody out and did a poll, like I could see yeah. from my thing, um, the, the, the everybody thinks that this is bad. Not everybody. I'll say seventy. 
65 to 70 percent of the people yeah. that surround the track not only not in lakeville uh, yeah because the track might be located in salisbury but it affects every business within it like a 25 to 50 mile radius because yeah. it brings in so many people so that's where the diversion There's comes a difference in. in opinion but we are out of time here <laughs> already <laughs> already oh my goodness lot, okay we had a lot to talk about uh, well, yeah there so, is so the berkshireedge.com is the location seven days a week 24 hours a day uh, <laughs> we'll speak when you say that, I'm thinking, oh, that's right. <laughs> that's true. That's, that's true. When he, says, when he, when he says that, it means get to work. <laughs> that's right. That, that's we'll, just what it means. Yeah. Right. Okay. We'll, okay, we'll speak Bye. to you. Yeah, we'll speak to you next week. Be Take safe, care. you guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Bye. Now, that is the BerkshireEdge.com, uh, the Berkshire Edge on Robin Hood Radio.